I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window? I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bed. Hey yo, welcome to Graybo's Giblets, part of the NoOffSeason.com sports card network. We know you don't have 40 hours a week to pour over podcasts and spreadsheets to handicap these games yourself. We do that for you and we bring you our picks each week so you can have some confidence heading into the weekend or walking up to the window. We are out here dropping giblets. So you might drop a few giblets about sports cards while we're here. I'm your host today, Denny One Time, and I'm here with probably one of the best minds in college basketball today, Mr. Gray Bo Burnett. What's going on? Didn't have the greatest of seasons, betting-wise, but it's tournament time. I was a little under the weather this week when nothing's going to stop me from talking about college basketball. I'm excited. It's the best time of the year, best sporting event of the year. Can't wait to get into it. It's going to be madness. Yeah, for those of you that care, this is Tuesday of, of March Madness Week. Uh, 48 hours ago, Gray and his whole family, me and my whole family were vomiting from a stomach bug. But as Gray said, Get nothing that. is going to stop us from getting you our picks this week because it literally is uh, the best week of the year, the best time of year. March Madness week one is truly something special, something that Gray and I certainly agree on. Yeah, everyone's got that image in their head now of us, the whole family vomiting. Yeah, picture good, good picture work. one person vomiting, I'll picture everyone vomiting. <laughs> and that's what my house was and Gray was, Gray's house was on Sunday. So, But it's Tuesday. Rough, it's a whole rough. new day. And by Thursday, we're going to be back oh, at it. We're going to be back. So I'm glad it happened before the tournament. Uh, me too. All right, well, let's, let's get into it, uh, boys and girls. Segment one, we're going to call this the regions. Um, always remember, uh, at Market Movers, you can save 20% after a free 14-day trial by visiting marketmoversapp.com and using the promo code NOOFFSEASON. And Market Movers is where we go to price cars, in case you don't know that. Um, all right, great. So let's start with the East region, okay? <clears throat> East region up top, you got UConn, Iowa State, Illinois, and Auburn. Um, most everyone agrees that UConn's the best team in the country. Most people agree that this is the toughest region. Um, you know, Danny Hurley doesn't care. He's going to play whoever you put in front of him. But a lot of people are saying you're getting like, not just good teams, but teams that are hot because, uh, two, three and four seeds won their conference turn. So let's get first into the first round matchups. Uh, any of them that you're looking forward to? Yeah. Uh, to go off of that, definitely the, this region is absolutely loaded. Uh, everyone's talking about again how the committee just got it wrong and talked about how they, you know, were too lazy that they were staying up all night and they were just slotting teams into the seeds just to make it have this go out on time. They sh- and they should definitely have other brackets uh, ready to go because this was one of the craziest conference tournaments season of all time. So many bid stealers uh, and to have UConn. Iowa State, Illinois, and Auburn, the top four seeds, and all conference champions in the same region is outrageous to me. You, you pretty much could say these are the four hottest teams going into the tournament, and now they all have to fight, not only fight each other, but fight the number one team in the country, UConn, who's the absolute wagon. Uh, so other than that, I know people don't like talking about you know the committee and who should have made it and who shouldn't. University of Virginia. I just I just had to get that out there, but this is going to be a hell of a region uh, to to look at and to go forward. I like the Washington State versus Drake matchup a lot. Uh, Tucker DeFreeze, if you haven't seen him play for Drake, he is a must watch. He's six in scoring in the NCAA. I'm definitely taking Drake in this one. Um, that's probably my favorite matchup to watch in my favorite betting matchup drake is the favorite uh, i believe it was minus one i'm going to take the money line uh, i think drake can go far uh, especially if you're doing like pools where you're drafting teams um, you get more points for the seed they're a 10 seed um, i like them as one of your teams to draft uh, you're looking at other teams in this region you have florida atlantic right an eight seed in san diego state a five seed those two teams were also in the Final Four last year. So this region is absolutely loaded. Uh, but my favorite matchup would have to be Drake-Washington State. Really looking forward to that. 
really looking forward to everyone seeing how good Drake really is. Uh, and Drake could give Iowa State some problems. Now, I, I do believe Iowa State's the best two seed out there. Should be a really good game. I think Iowa State gets by Drake, but Drake could give them some problems for sure. Um, so that's where I'm going as one of my favorite matchups in this region. Yeah, so uh, for most people, if you're like me, you're heavy into football season. It takes you a while to transition from football into college basketball season, but, but Graybo never leaves college basketball. He's in it 20, 12 months out of the year, so he's been spitting <clears throat> Drake in my ear. I usually spit the rapper Drake in his ear. He spits basketball Drake into mine. Um, oh. So I cannot wait to watch this guy Tucker DeVries. DeFreeze, how do you say his name? DeFreeze. DeFreeze play. No, I'm excited. Um, all right, cool. So any first round bets you're taking on games? Yeah, this first round bets. I guess I'll take. Uh, I'm going to take Drake money line. Uh, I really like Morehead State to cover Illinois. Uh, Morehead State can slow Illinois down. Illinois is an elite offense. Uh, they're not very good on defense. They don't turn you over uh, very well. Uh, Morehead State is a very slow paced team. And a lot of times you want to take teams uh, that play good D because a lot of times people like. Uh, you saw Virginia against UMBC, couldn't throw it in the ocean. Look what happened. Uh, Illinois could play tight. You know, you, you, this is one and done tournament. Uh, Moorhead State's going to keep it close. It was at 13 and a half. I got it at 13 and a half. It's now 11 and a half. So people are on that uh, trend. Uh, Moorhead State can give Illinois a game. They're 26 and eight. Uh, Riley Minix uh, averages 21 points per game, uh, was the player of the year in the conference. Really good player. I mean, Morehead State, they play a little zone, can mix it up, and they slow you down. And Illinois' defense is not that great if you're looking at Kim Palm rankings. They're ranked in the 200 somewhere. So I like Morehead State uh, covering that number. I also like San Diego State covering minus seven, a team that has a lot of guys coming back. They have Ladee, their big post guy. Uh, UAB made it in the tournament because. They got hot at the right time. They won the championship. But they're all over the place. Uh, they are a very high-risk team. So I, I really like San Diego State to cover there uh, pretty easily because San Diego State plays defense. UAB depends on their offense to get up and down and transition, and San Diego State will slow them down. Uh, so I like San Diego State minus seven there. It's pretty funny. You, you talked about how tough this region is from the top four seeds. But also, you got FAU in there, Final Four team, San Diego State, Final Four team, which is pretty wild. All right, who was the fourth Final Four team last year? Fourth Final Four team last year, we were just talking San, about. San Diego State lost to UConn in the finals, right? Yeah. Um, who uh, who San Diego State? San Diego State beat Florida. Who, uh, Miami. Oh, Miami, That's yeah, That's why yeah. I couldn't think of it, because yeah, they had a lot of guys come back, and they were they're finished, not even, they're not even they finished 13th in the ACC. Yeah. All right, so futures and uh, who's going to the Final Four? If you're looking at um, UConn's even money, uh, plus 100. Iowa State's plus 450. Auburn is twice as favored as the three seed. Auburn's plus 490, and That's Illinois' is plus 850. And your Drake boys are at 46 to 1. Uh, you sprinkle any money Ooh. on any of these? I didn't know Drake was 46 to 1. No, I'm not taking any, any, anyone to reach the Final Four because I don't think anyone's getting past UConn, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I am going to take UConn to reach the Final Four at plus 200. I think that's a. Uh, uh, pretty good value for a team that I think is going to breeze through to the Final Four. Now, they do play Auburn if that matchup happens. Auburn can be a little scary, very deep bench, play a lot of guards. They'll, uh, they'll press you. I just think Auburn's very streaky when it comes to shooting. UConn has just looked and played the part all year. I just don't see anyone beating UConn. Now, can it happen? Yes, it's March for sure, but I think UConn. Marches on to the final four. I'm going to take them at plus 200. I would have had, I probably would have had Auburn in my final four if they played in any other region. Wow. Yeah. It's that, crazy. That's what's, I, I'm just talking about last year's final four <clears throat> makes you remember that <clears throat> you're filling out your bracket. You, all, you have all these grand plans and then chaos is going to ensue. And that's what makes it beautiful. Um, just think about that final four last year. We, we were not talking about this time last year about San Diego State. FAU no. were Miami. We were not, not talking about those. Two. FAU is not on the radar. I will say this: uh, you're playing if you're doing a bracket. I'm not taking UConn to win at all. I'll tell you that because because you're doing a bracket too chalky. Too chalky. Yeah, everyone's going to take UConn. You got to get different. Yeah, unless you have multiple brackets. Yeah, 
I, I would say, you know, if you're playing in a pool with 12 people, take UConn. If you're playing in a pool with a thousand people, you're going to have to take somebody different. Or if you still take UConn because they're going to win, you got to get really weird somewhere else. All right, let's move to the West. The West is highlighted by the top four seeds, North Carolina, Arizona, Baylor, and Alabama. Any first round matchups you're looking at uh, there? Yeah, definitely. I think the weakest region here with UNC one, Arizona two, Baylor three, Bama four. Uh, really love this St. Mary's versus Grand Canyon uh, matchup. I wish St. Mary's was playing anyone else but Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, I think, in Ken Palm is a top 40 team. A uh, really good 12 seed that could make some noise if they beat St. Mary's. And if they get past St. Mary's, they could definitely beat Bama as well. I think Bama is the most overrated team at uh, at a four seed in this uh, tournament. They don't play any defense. I think their last couple games, they let up 90, 90 points. They've let up 100 points this season. Uh, they have a great offense, but their defense is terrible. So I think the Bama-Charleston game is a great matchup. And my favorite matchup that we'll be watching is Clemson and New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico at 11 seed is crazy. Uh, this tells you that the committee did not even have them in the tournament, that they didn't win their conference tournament. Uh, they got Jalen House. They got uh, Mashburn. So Eddie House's kid and Jamal Mashburn's kid on the same team is pretty crazy. Uh, and then they got the big big man transfer from Iona uh, Jr. So New Mexico is a really good team, and they're hot. Clemson lost. Um, to uh, who they lose to in the ACC tournament was an NC State. I forget it'll come back to me, but Clemson lost in the first round or the quarterfinals with the ACC. So they're they're not full strength when it when it's coming to who's playing well. And this is all about timing uh, in March. So I really like New Mexico uh, to to win that game. Clemson lost to Boston College. Boston College by twenty one right. points. That's right, by twenty one points. Yeah. It wasn't even like a close game. So I really like New Mexico to get out of that first round. And they're favorites, too, just looking at it. They're minus two. Yeah. Um, and I like it. Um, so I want to ping, I want to pick your brain on uh, Dayton, Nevada. Who are you picking that game? I'm taking Nevada. Okay. And then how about Mississippi State, Michigan State? I'm taking Michigan State. Just because it's Izzo? Just because it's Izzo. Okay. Um, yeah. I am. Uh, Dayton, just, man, I don't know what is up with them. They have no bench. They're in trouble. And so, Nevada, I think Nevada's really good. And I think the Mountain West got robbed on some seeding. Yeah. Here. I think that should be flipped, actually. Nevada 7, Dayton 10. Yeah, I think Nevada's favored by a point and a half. Okay, so St. Mary's Grand Canyon, did you say your winner there? So, man, I'm going to take St. Mary's. But it's, uh, but it's hard. It's cause... hard. I, I'm going to take St. Mary's because I really you like You have St. them Mary's. beating Alabama? I do. Okay. I do. I have Bama losing uh, in the second round to whoever it is. Um, I think St. Mary's and Grand Canyon can beat Bama. Yeah. I am not a big Bama fan uh, for this tournament. Yeah, they don't have Brandon Miller anymore. They do not. They don't play defense. Um, okay, so futures for the region. Elite, who's going to the uh, Final Four? Let me give you the odds here. I, and I'm looking at, at uh, FanDuel for what it's worth, and so your odds may be different. But Arizona, the two seed, is actually the favorite at plus 230. North Carolina, plus 340. Baylor, plus 650. Bama, plus 750. Let's go down a little bit. St. Mary's ten to one. God, Michigan State's next at sixteen to one. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's and ridiculous. Dayton and Nevada. But people forget I took Michigan State preseason to win it all at fifteen to one. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> no, they still could. Always a possibility. Always. Um. So Grand Canyon's at forty-five to one. Just just throwing that out there. Dangling what's it. uh? What's Baylor? I would I would take them. Uh, plus six fifty. Yeah. I'd take Baylor at plus six fifty okay. uh to reach the final four. Um I think Arizona's gonna do it. Um You're not they, a believer in the Tar Heels? I'm not. Um <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm they had a good season. They proved me wrong, beat Duke twice. Can they reach the final four? Absolutely. They're in the weakest uh region. They gotta go through Michigan State. They gotta go through St. Mary's. Yeah. Uh, so how about I think Baylor and Zona can really give UNC problems though. And how cool would it be if we had arizona versus unc in the lead eight caleb, caleb love. love yeah versus old team yeah dude if if you if you have watched the kid play he can be like everything or nothing you know what I mean? yeah that's like, what they were saying yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah he when, when carolina uh you know had their run was, that was two years ago yeah. right um he was a major factor in the in the tournament as a, as a, a youngster a huge shot against duke but then when he has a bad game man it's really bad mm -hmm. And people forget they had him and R.J. Davis. Yeah. R.J. <clears throat> Davis is now ACC Player of the Year. Yeah. Chemistry. 
Yeah. Chemistry. He's a stud. All right, let's roll into the South region, highlighted by uh, the top four seeds, Houston, Marquette, Kentucky, and Duke. Um, what first round matchups, first round bets are you looking at thinking about? All right. Um, did I say who I was betting first round in the West? Um, we can go back to that if you like. Yeah, let's go back to okay, that real go ahead. quick. Go ahead. Uh, some bets I have. I have Charleston getting 10 points against Bama. I do think I'm going to take Grand Canyon with the points at five and a half, but losing that game. Uh, and I'm going to take uh, New Mexico uh, money line. I'm going to money line New Mexico. It would be okay. my three first round bets. All right. So let's get it. All right. Let's go to the South. Yeah. First round in the South. What are we looking forward I to? Mean, and what, who are you betting in the, the first round? The part in my take championship here, Wisconsin and James Madison. Uh, going to be a great game. Everyone's picking JMU. Uh, I think that Wisconsin is going to win this game. I think people are overreacting of how good JMU was this year. Yeah, they beat some, they beat some decent teams. They're 31 and three. That's incredible. Uh, and they're really good, but I think Wisconsin, uh, has, has the right pieces to go pretty far. Uh, so I'm going to take Wisconsin, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to that first round matchup. Uh, Hepburn is healthy. Well, I know you're already going to, if you're taking Wisconsin to beat JMU and the way you're talking about them, you're going to take them to beat Duke. Next I, I think Duke's in trouble. Yeah. I really think Duke's in trouble. I like, if JMU beats Wisconsin, I think JMU beats Duke. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, th- well, I forget the stat, but Duke, the last time Duke finished with uh, two, two losses in a row before entering the tournament, they got knocked out in the first round or second round. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, I grew up a Duke fan. I'm still, I would still call myself a Duke fan. And you just going into the tournament, you either have confidence or you don't. And I do not have it right now. Yeah. But again, they could surprise some people. Uh, man, and, and if you want to, if you take them to the final four, that would be a pretty good pick in the bracket because they can do it yeah. for sure. And a lot of people are not going to have them just because of what we talked about, just the way they've been playing. They don't, they, they don't look great right now. They have a lot of things that they need to be. Uh, working on and, and need to improve before they uh, get to this tournament. Yep. All right. So you're looking at the Wisconsin JMU game. Uh, what other first round matchups? What other first round matchups? Really like the Florida, whoever they play in that Colorado Boise State. You like Florida uh, huh? game? I do like Florida. They did lose their center in the SEC championship, but they alternate centers a lot. As long as they don't lose any of their guards, like Clayton Jr. Uh, they're going to be okay. They can shoot the ball very well. They're playing very well. They did get beat pretty badly by Auburn in the SEC championship, but had some good wins uh, in the SEC tournament and really turned it on. And then Golden is one of the best young head coaches in the game. I think he'll be ready. Uh, I do think that will be a fight, though, if they get Colorado. Or, uh, they're going to get Colorado or Boise State, both two teams that could definitely put up a fight against them. So that's going to be just a good first-round matchup. Uh, to watch for sure. Yeah. Uh, are you going to talk about A and M Nebraska? And who do you like in that? Uh, I like A and M. A and M. I mean, they have Wade Taylor, who's SEC preseason player of the year. Uh, Tyrese Radford, uh, Redford, uh, and well, I, formerly Virginia Tech Hokey Radford, yeah, right? And then and when Buzz left, he took him. Yep, yeah, he sure did. Um, I had A and M preseason to reach the Final Four. Um, uh, I think on paper they're a really good team. And a they, lot of sorry, go ahead. They they really turned it on towards the end of the year. They they struggled uh, early after the loss to UVA. They they uh, fell apart a little bit. Then Buzz once he hit once Buzz hits a tournament, he, he yeah they turn it on for him. SC he does tournament. They beat Kentucky. They were right there. They were they were up eighteen on Florida in the yeah. semifinals, and Florida came back to beat them. Yeah. So in this NCAA tournament. I, I see A and M getting past Nebraska, and then a lot of sharps have them giving Houston some trouble. Do you see that? Yeah, they can match up well. I don't think they'll beat them. Uh, Houston's defense is just really good. Now Houston, very streaky team, shooting the ball. What if L. J. Cryer can uh, start making shots, getting to the line? Uh, Houston's going to be all right. They've really got to get Roberts healthy. Took him out of the game early against Iowa State because they were getting crushed. So we need to keep it. To keep an eye on Roberts' status uh, heading into the tournament for sure because he's their number one big man. If they don't have him, they're they're in trouble because they don't have a lot of depth at the, at the big position. Okay. Uh, NC State is their run over after over 
Yeah, five wins I, in a row. I, I can't. That's it. That was their freaking NCAA tournament. Yeah, right there. Like, that's awesome. They did that. Now they get this Texas Tech team that's just going to beat them down defensively. Uh, it, it's going to be tough uh, for NC State uh, to beat Texas Tech. I got Texas Tech covering minus five and a half. Uh, I don't think NC State. You know, NC State has had time to. They know these ACC teams. They played them before. They know the matchups. Now you got a tough Texas Tech team that plays really good defense. I think it's going to give them a lot of trouble. Yeah. Okay. First round bets. Anything you're taking? First round bet. So Texas Tech minus five and a half. I like. Um, I am going to take Florida. Uh, I think. Do you have that number? I think it was minus two and a half. Whoever Florida they play. game. Yeah, it's pretty close. Depending. Yeah. It's depending pretty, who it is. Yeah. It's two uh, and a half or so. I, I, I think it was. I was looking at Colorado to get by Boise State, so that was the one I was looking at, and I think it was minus two and a half. Yeah. Um, how about Western Kentucky's only thirteen and a half against Marquette, <laughs> which I thought was lo- like yeah. that's that's scary for Marquette to see it, that that number. West Kentucky twenty two and eleven, uh, not bad. Um, and then I think I'm going to take A and M uh, money line A and M uh, versus Nebraska. I think they're plus one. Okay, plus one. Yeah, I like I like Buzz in that spot. Um, cool. All right. Well, let's th- talk about who's going to get out of the region. <clears throat> who do yeah. you have winning it, and who might you take? Uh, let me pull up the. Uh... Yeah, I mean Houston's been a uh, buzz all year. Uh, just need to get healthy. I think I think that was a good loss for them. I actually like t- some teams, you know, getting beat right before the tournament, and I think this was good for Houston. Thirty and four though on the season, they're really really good. I think Houston versus Kentucky in the lead eight will be an unbelievable matchup. And I do think Houston gets by, especially for my, for my Houston ticket. I really want, I'm really going to be pulling for Houston to actually win it all. Mm-hmm. Um, can they do it? Yes. Uh, so I have Houston. I, I'm kind of chalky there. Houston uh, out of the South, UConn out of the East, Zona out of the West. Kind of chalky, but Midwest is going to be uh, where it gets kind, weird for kind you. Kind of get different. Yeah. So looking at odds to win the South, Houston at plus one thirty five. So you're getting a little bit of plus money. Uh, Marquette at five fifty. I think we both think that's a pass. Duke at plus six fifty. Both think that's a pass. Kentucky at plus seven hundred. I feel like if you're going to bet someone it, yeah. else, that, I got them at eight hundred. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Wisconsin's at thirteen to one. Florida's at sixteen to one. Um, I don't see anybody else down there. I would even consider. Um, how about Colorado? You don't, so you don't think that so like Florida were to lose to Colorado? I think some sharps have Colorado making a run. Yeah, uh, some sharps uh, have have were t- talking about how they pre bet preseason had Colorado in the Final Four. Right. So they have the talent. <clears throat> they absolutely have the talent. They have one of the best point guards in the country in Simpson. They have to uh, win one extra game though. Yeah, to, like I mean, VCU they're only thirty five. So uh, I, I do. Uh, that's going to be a hard game for Florida. I think if yeah. Florida can get past Colorado, actually, I think they make a run and yeah. beat Marquette. In my bracket, I had Florida beating Marquette, and then I changed my mind and had Colorado beating Marquette. So I'm kind of I'm with you. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All I right. think I think I'm that way too. I think Colorado can definitely beat Marquette. Um. Cool. All right. So let's get to the the uh, Midwest. The last region, the Midwest. Midwest. Head, headlined by Purdue, Tennessee, Creighton, and Kansas. And I didn't have to even look at the show notes to, to know who you're taking out of here. I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for the audience. Uh, but let's, let's start with first round matchups. I think I take them every, I think I take them every year. <laughs> they come close a lot of times. I know. Um, all right, so first round matchups, who are you looking forward to? Uh, first round matchups, the best matchup probably in the first round. The whole tournament is Will Wade and McNeese. Yes, let's talk about that McNeese. The freaking Zags. So, uh, did you go? To, did you go to the VCU McNeese game? I with did me? not. That's why I wanted you to tell me. Yeah, tell me about it. They shot sh- that kid Shahada Wells. is an yeah. elite guard. I yeah. think he was a transfer from TCU. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Will Wade can flat out coach. Yeah, Lo- yeah, love him or hate him. Most people hate him. Um, for those that aren't Richmond guys, <laughs> you know. Will Wade came to VCU for one year, and he left, and he pissed off VCU people when he left that fast. But then he went to LSU, had success, and you had the you had the scandal. Him basically, before you could pay kids legally, he was just basically just paying kids and uh, unabashedly doing so. Now, even with you know, NIL money being legal, um, he comes into McNeese and says, "We're going to go from twenty three losses to twenty three wins." Does right? And, it's unbelievable. And he, he went thirty and three in his first year. 
um, they're freaking loaded for you know for that type that kind of conference. And so when I when I saw them play at VCU, I had I got to the game not even knowing Will Wade was the coach. I just, yeah, you know, right. just showed up at the game like I was like that's Will Wade. Holy crap! Um, and then to see what they did this year, it's unreal. So I think like if, if you don't follow the Will Wade news, I think I don't think the world knows who McNeese is. And I think I think they can make a, a dent here. Definitely, like I, I could see McNeese going Sweet Sixteen. But you and they're playing against uh, your Zags. They're playing against the Zags. Yeah. I mean, they got a tough matchup. The Zags um, are, are playing well. They did lose to St. Mary's in the West Coast Championship, but the Zags at one point were on that bubble, um, and then they really turned it on and and pretty much they're a five seed, so like mm-hmm. nowhere near the bubble, right? So right. twenty five and seven. <laughs> uh, Nimhard and Graham Ik from Wyoming. Uh, they got it. They got a good backcourt, a good front court. If the Zags can play defense, with which is their biggest weakness, Mark Few doesn't play defense. Yeah, um, McNeese can give them trouble. And at plus six, I'm going to take McNeese at plus six, but I have Zags moving on. And it's just in a, unique, in a classic. In a classic. Well, I'm, I'm going to be glued to the TV for that one. It's a very unique spot because they're they're a good 12 seed that's that's playing Gonzaga. So if they can win that, the next game is Kansas Sanford and and. We obviously know Kansas has struggled at the, end of the second half of the year, struggled with injury, got blown out uh, in their conference tournament. But even before that, lost a bunch of games. I mean, they were a top five team two months ago, right, Kansas? And, and now I mean, they're preseason number one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, got, we don't know what Hunter Dickinson's status is. Uh, Hunter Dickinson doesn't play. Uh, I could see Sanford with an upset. Um, eight and a half. It's a good spread uh, for Sanford. Uh, I think McCullough is. They they sat out McCullough and Dickinson in the Big Twelve tournament. Mm-hmm. Their two best players lost by twenty. Yeah. On the first round, so they don't have those guys. They're in big trouble. Uh, yeah. Which is crazy because they still have Dewan Harris and KJ Adams. Right. Um, just not the same team. Something's going on there, and you're struggling going to the tournament. That's a four seed you want to play right now. And Sanford's twenty nine and five. Yeah. Uh, they're a pretty good mid major team. I'm with you. Give me McNeese in the Sweet 16. <laughs> Let's do it. You could have a McNeese Sanford matchup. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for sure. And then, you know, Purdue uh, is proven that they can lose in this thing. Yeah, early. You could, yeah, I actually could see the 11, 12, and 13 win in Oregon. I think it's going to beat South Carolina. Yep. They're the Pac 12 champions. Uh, Nafale Dante is absolutely crushing right now. Center for Oregon. South Carolina is very guard oriented. I don't know how they're going to guard him. Uh, yeah, I think Ken Palm has Oregon at like 55 and South Carolina at 49. So there's not a big difference there. And the spread's only one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have Oregon beating South Carolina okay. as well. Um, and then you got to talk about Virginia, Colorado State. Now, that's going to, if you're not a Virginia or Colorado State fan, don't watch that game. <laughs> it's gonna it going to be like 12 to 14. I think the over under is 112. Um, so that's what everyone was saying. Uh, yeah, I heard this stat. Virginia is 190th offensively. Oh, they're and bad. 190th. Uh, let's look. How can your guy, Tony, recruit guys that play such good defense but cannot score the 194th. basketball? 194th. There's only, like, how many teams? Seven defense. That's why. Yeah. It's insane. Um, he, uh, um, my, my prediction is Tony will be pulling a J right very soon. He can't, I don't think he can keep up with this transfer stuff. Yeah. But he's a coach, like he's a guy that wants. I mean, Patina. I don't like him, but he said it best. He's like, yeah, look what I did with Donovan Mitchell. He was there all four years. Yeah. Now look at him, like he 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 wants to coach and wants to develop players. He doesn't want to just pick. Yeah. Trent kids coming in and it, it's hard for him. Yeah. I think. The the great ones have always recruited, but also developed. And when you lose ability to develop over time and build those relationships, it's, it's a different game. It's just like you're like fat Joe picking a team at the Rucker Park game. You're just picking a team for <laughs> that day. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Um. All right. So first round bets. Uh, what are you looking at? Yeah, first round, first bets? round bets. I like uh, McNeese and Sanford. Uh, eight and a half and six. Uh, to keep it close, um, I really like TCU minus three and a half to get by Utah State. I think they're dynamic guards. Um, Utah State uh, had some trouble towards the end of the season. Um, I think TCU is going to win that game, and I like that number at three and a half. And then I like Oregon to beat South Carolina. I might just money line that because it was plus one. 
So a lot of bets in the Midwest. I think you can get really different in the Midwest. I'm rooting for Purdue. To go- I'm rooting for Purdue to win it all. Um, it was my preseason pick. I'm going to change it, but they are my preseason pick. I just think Purdue is going to Purdue it <laughs> and yeah. choke it away somehow. So, I mean, like, you know, your Wahoos lost in the first right. round of one seed, came back and won it the next year. That's what I was saying. So you know the Purdue Has locker room, and you believe in the coach. You like oh, the coach. The coach is very good. Yeah. And so you would you would hope, dear God, they're going to come back focused, angry, ready to, to put a hurting on this bracket. Uh, but all right, so let's 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 talk about who gets out of this region, right? Uh, Purdue plus one sixty five, Tennessee plus three forty, Creighton plus four sixty, Gonzaga plus nine fifty, Kansas is twelve to one. Um, your TCU team you like twenty five to one, Oregon thirty five to one. If I keep going down, McNeese is sixty five to one. Um, any thoughts? Uh, my favorite uh, to come out of this region are the Creighton Blue Jays. Uh, and by the way, that's I knew you were going to say that. You knew I was going to say that. Uh, I believe they're plus what four hundred to win the region. Would you? Uh, I got plus four sixty here. Oh, I'm going to go to Fanduel then plus four sixty. Yeah, uh, they have they have the shooters. They have the veterans. They have the big man. Uh, they have the coaching. They've been in this spot before. Uh, and they've made some deep runs in this tournament the last couple of years. And I think they just need to get over that hump. This is the region to do it in, especially since I think uh, looking at theirs, uh, they're in a very favorable spot. I mean, you have Tennessee, who's the two seed. Tennessee is known for blowing a lot of tournament games. Same yeah. with Purdue, who's the one seed. Uh, you have Gonzaga. And Gonzaga, who has to play a tough McNeese team. You have Kansas, who's banged up. I think Creighton is the best team right now, playing-wise, uh, that I'm going to see them playing Purdue in the Elite Eight and beat Purdue. Yeah. That's my prediction for that region. And I have it the same way, unfortunately, so I can't really argue with you there. <laughs> uh, I, I, this. I do feel like Tennessee's going to blow it at some point. I feel like they just have – they're too they vulnerable. Just, they just lost to Mississippi State in the first round of the SEC tournament. Right. They what, can, is, what is with them in tournament? They can get cold, and they got the stud. Dalton Neck. Connect, yeah. Connect. He's, connect. Connect. Yeah, connect. Connect four. Um, all right, so let's look at um, uh, segment two. Let's call it futures. Um, this could be, and we already talked about futures to get to the final four, but if you want to add anything on there um, to make the Sweet 16, the final four, to win the national championship, et cetera. Who are we looking so, at? So yeah, I have my I have my preseason numbers. I want you to see how how I did based on their numbers now. Okay, Can we do that. So yeah, I'd love to. Preseason numbers. This is to win it all. This was to win it all in our in our preseason show. Okay, I had let's see, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I had nine futures. Okay, eight out of nine made the tournament, which is good. Okay, who was the one that uh, didn't? Nova. Okay, uh, they need to fire that coach. Because they definitely had the players to make the tournament. Uh, I had tennis. I have, I had Tennessee. I have Tennessee thirty to one. They're now seventeen to one. So you could cash that for a profit like that. I have Creighton thirty to one. Creighton is twenty five to one. So uh, slight profit. Marquette twenty two to one. They're now twenty five to one. Slight loss. Houston twenty two to one. Twenty two to one was yep. Houston. They're five fifty. Yep. That's a massive them. profit. Got them at yeah. twenty two to one. Wow. Texas A and M was at sixty to one. Definitely took a loss on that. Uh, I, let's see. They are now eighty to one. I still. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Texas Tech. Hang on. You said Texas A and M. They're one hundred fifty to one. Yeah. I might. I might sprinkle a little more on them. Yeah. To, I, to be I, I don't. I don't hate that. Uh, Michigan State was fifteen to one. Huge, huge loss. But you know, um, they were my preseason uh, team to make the cha- national championship. Michigan State was what? Fifty. I got them fifteen to one. Yeah, they're sixty-five to one. Sixty-five to one. Mm-hmm. Gonzaga thirty to one. That's now, pretty. now fifty to one. Fifty. Yeah. Damn. And I got the Wisconsin Badgers mm-hmm. at 140 to one. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's yeah. So it's 60 to one now. So you could cash it in for yeah. kind of two X. Yeah. So some good, some bad, but I really like the Houston uh, bet. Uh, Creighton and Tennessee are in the same region, so I uh, can let that run a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wisconsin was just like I can't believe it. Like with all their starters that came back, I had it. And they and Wisconsin made it to number seven in the country at one. Wow, so I was pretty excited that that's, I got that's that. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, it's got me thinking. As soon as the brackets came out, I was all over JMU, obviously, just because being in Virginia. And, but like, it's is it 
whenever like the public's excited about the yeah. 12 seed or the a, public a, yeah you gotta fade, you might have to fade the public there but I, I will say jmu like is gonna match up well with wisconsin this is gonna be a really good game and since we're in virginia i i, I couldn't find that spread um because they don't give us you know where you can find I know, it. I know you know we can't find it. Colonial, Colonial Beach. Beach. Okay. We might have to ride down there <laughs> uh, because I probably might. I I probably will bet JMU. Uh, they'll probably. I wonder what the number is. Um, we can find it on the 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 wider interweb. But I just think Wisconsin gets gets by there. Wisconsin's good. Yeah, let's see. Wisconsin JMU one. Um, but other than that, I have my future bets already. Uh, I mentioned. Uh, some teams that I have reaching the final four, UConn, I had to plus two, uh, 200, Kentucky plus 800, uh, Creighton plus 460. Where did you get uh, Baylor as where'd well? Where'd you get UConn plus 200? I have them at plus 100. Uh, That's a big difference. Uh, DraftKings, I believe. DraftKings, okay. I mean, so it might have been. Might have changed. Yeah, it was a couple of nights ago. All right, Wisconsin is a four and a half point favorite over Jamie. Yeah, it's going to be a good game. Yeah. Um, it's gonna right. be a really good game. So, any other future bets? At this point, no. I'm sure I will be making more as we go. Like, I'm sure, like as we go throughout this tournament, we'll be making some bets. Um, but not at the moment. I have my to reach the final four um, in my future national champions. I don't gotcha. really. I really don't do the Sweet Sixteen. Just yeah. you can't find great numbers. I don't do that one either. Um, all right, let's get to segment three, Final Four National Championship. Do it. Don't forget, at graybos.co, you can get 10% off any purchase. That's merch, that's cards, whatever you want, whatever wax, whatever we have there, using the promo code STRATEGY2023. All right, so Final Four. Um, we've already talked about it. Why don't you remind the crowd, the audience here, who your Final Four teams are, and then who's going to win it all. Yeah, uh, and then I want to hear yours. Uh, so we have UConn coming out of the East. Crazy region, uh, but the number one team, UConn, I think is 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 gonna is gonna get there. Uh, Arizona out of the West, Houston out of the South, and Creighton out of the Midwest is my final four in Phoenix. I, I have and I have UConn beating Iowa State. I have Arizona beating St. Mary's. Hmm. I so have, you have St. Mary's beating UNC. I do. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Yep. <laughs> well, it's different. Yeah, you got to get different. different. I got to get different if I'm going to be chalky. Yeah. Um, I have Houston beating Kentucky, but I've had Florida in some mm-hmm. as well. And then I have uh, Creighton beating Purdue. Okay. Uh, What's yours? What's and yours? And then, and then, really quick. So then, U- UConn versus Arizona. You. I have UConn uh, versus Houston in the national championship. Okay. Uh, and you got UConn beating Houston. I do. Okay. If I had to choose, UConn beat. Houston, yep. but who I want Houston so I can cash that ticket. Yep. So mine's pretty similar to yours, unfortunately. So I've got <clears throat> I've got UConn beating Iowa State, UConn advancing. I've got Carolina beating Arizona. Um, in that game, I'm a little bigger Carolina fan than you are. After them watching them trounce my Blue Devils several times, I have a little more <laughs> respect for them. Jay Billis talks about how tough they are. Blah blah blah. Um, I've got Houston beating Kentucky in that game. And if, yeah, if you made me pick. Anything different there? I, I would I would have Kentucky sneaking into the Final Four. Um, I've got Creighton beating Purdue. Look at us! I know. Um, Look at us. So I've got let's see. I've got Marquette losing to Florida. I'm sorry to Colorado. You got them lose, possibly losing to Florida. That's the two seed. I got Tennessee losing to Creighton. I've got I'm just I'm somewhat like the two seed, just so you know. Uh, and I've got yeah, I, I've got the only two. I got the I got all the two seeds getting to the Sweet Sixteen except for Marquette. Um, and honestly, I just didn't want to go chalk, 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 chalk. I'm also rooting for Purdue. Um, but so in the final four, I've got UConn beating UNC. I've got Houston beating Creighton. And I've got UConn beating Houston. Look at us. So like same boring bracket. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> get in. Well, I'm gonna. I, I just think UConn's really good. And I I, and you and I, I've been listening all year about you talk about how good Houston is, and I've been watching them, and they're, they're they are good. And they they just lost, and they're banged up though. They are banged yeah. up. Two of their bigs are banged up, which is not good. How long are they being? Don't even know. That's that's the thing. You yeah. don't know. Yeah. I mean, everyone's keeping like no one's telling us anything until I guess Thursday or Friday. Yeah. When they actually start the the games. All right. So like, if I'm gonna do seven pools, uh, how would you? And let's just talk about just the seven winners. 
to me personally, I'm probably going to do UConn in three of my seven. So yeah, three out of seven. Houston in two. Uh, or maybe just Houston in one. Um, and then who else should I sprinkle in? I'd sprinkle in Purdue for sure. Okay. I think a lot of people are thinking the same thing. We're thinking like Purdue is going to choke, but like Purdue's been a number one team all year. Uh, they had the best player in the country. Yeah. Uh, they're a really good team. Depth. They got depth too. Like yeah. they have a bench. As your dad says, they got Noah's Ark. They got two of everything. Well, two of everything. I, I love when your dad says two it. of everything. Two bigs, two guards, two. Four. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a great pick because everyone is kind of off of them. Like people have UNC probably more than Purdue to win the national championship just because of the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like that. It's hard because, man, I would do, I mean, Auburn. Yeah, they, Auburn. God, they play UConn. Like, that's a, like, really I, whoever. I, like, I can't do it. So you like UConn in that bracket in the East. You like UConn, Iowa State, and Auburn. Yeah. All three of those. Whoever gets out of there has a pretty good shot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did you want to reference your uh, your other preseason picks, your sleepers, your final? Oh, no, I just wanted to say, like, uh, uh, my preseason final four was Purdue, Michigan State, Marquette, A and M. So none, I've changed one to mine. But if that, but now, if that final if that final four hits, that'd be pretty sweet. We gotta keep. So you got to I got to take credit. A one seed, a two seed. And I had Purdue over Michigan State. Nine so. and nine, and Purdue over Michigan. Nine State. and nine, a one and a two. Yeah. Okay. What's well, good to remind you of the preseason because sometimes through a year you have you have injuries, you have other things. But going back to the beginning, like the caliber of the team, the talent level, it might have it might lead you to value like a team like Michigan State or A and M a little that's bit why, more. I do. That's why I like them to get past the first round yeah. as nine seeds. And what's it, crazy about that is they can give. I think Michigan State can give UNC trouble. Sure. A and M is going to give Houston trouble. I think. If if that happens, well, it's always good to remember in the tournament that these numbers, these seeds in front of numbers, uh, are just a suggestion because chaos ensues. And there's like there's a team right now that's an 11 seed and that was a six seed a month ago, right? right? And then vice versa. So like there's not there's a lot of teams that an eight seed and like a, a one seed aren't really that much different in teams when when a month ago it might be a three and a four. For Absolutely. Example. Like Carolina wasn't a one seed all year; they were the last two weeks. For sure. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you before we get out of here is, besides brackets, what are some other cool things to play when it comes to March Madness? Because y'all are missing out in some of these games. <laughs> yeah, I would say the, bra- it's the crazy brackets. The brackets, like, I'm not, I'm, like, I don't even like the brackets. I know, I know. The brackets are my least favorite. I'll do a bunch. And yeah, then I'll do, yeah. From the last weekend, I'll be, one of my seven brackets will be alive, and the other six will be dead. Right. So you and I and Keith Harvey and now Fitz do this massive um, uh, survivor pool um, where you pick one team each ga- each day. The seed matters. The higher the seed, the better. And so it's one of those brackets where you you, know, you do 54 of them. You don't just do one. We do 54 different brackets. And we, <laughs> we, we allocate the teams like you would allocate like a stocks in a mutual fund portfolio. It's pretty fun. That is by far my favorite. Um, there's some survivors where you do two games on Thursday, two Friday, one Saturday, one Sunday, or sometimes two Saturday, two Sunday. And those are pretty fun. Um, I, I like any kind of pool that rewards, um, you more for picking a higher seed to win something. I think those are, those are a lot of fun. Um, I like future bets and then I like getting all these pools and then you can use things like futures. You can use other tools to, to hedge. Right. Um, so how about you? What, anything else? Any other kind uh, of pool you're getting in? Uh, one of the, uh, beat the spread type thing so like you get some some people do like you get one team in each region um some people just you get two teams just depending on how many people are in there but like you could get like a 16 seed but all you have to do is cover right so if they cover and still lose well guess what now you have the one seed right and you move on yeah um that's always fun uh just a a a team draft yeah oh the Um, team drafts are fun draft is fun where you you could do like victories you, or you could do what well, we do it where you just pick eight teams and that's based like you get more points if it's a higher seed right so that's what i was talking about with drake at a 10 seed probably will be one of my eight teams right uh but you also could do a draft where you know i get first pick and i take uconn and no one else can have them right uh, it's always fun too right uh so it's the best time of year it's great man. and then as soon as it's over and, you, and you're sad that it's over the masters is here right and so we have a month of of just sheer joy ahead of us. Springtime, the birds are singing. Grabo's Parlay will be opening up uh, in about Derby. a month and a half. Kentucky Derby. Um, God bless America. 
All right. All right. Well, folks, that is all for today. Good luck with your wagers. We appreciate you listening and riding along with Graybos. Be sure you tune in next time and leave us a review. You can check us out, graybosjiblets.com, for all information, links to our Discord, etc. Please email us at info at graybos.co. Follow us on the gram at graybos underscore cards. Stop by the shop located at 214 East Gray Street. Thanks to Graybo for toughing it out, even though he feels like death. He was not going to let you guys down. No. He was not going to let the listeners down. Couldn't. Thanks for riding with Graybos. Go who's Giblets. When I go to sleep, I don't see sheep, see dollar signs. Hundred dog got him beat the eyes for the hundredth time at a money line. Brock Purdy was irrelevant. Now I'm at the front like a cutting line. G5 to the power five. Gray was on fire like a summertime. I know they watching. I'm going to make them sweat. Put your money down. Place your bet. Degenerate. Yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else going to get you to the window? I know they watching, I'ma make them sweat. Put your money down, place your bet. Degenerate, yeah, I'm a sicko. Who else gonna get you to the window?